Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So often it seems that our lives are dry as dust. Sometimes it seems that it's circumstances that do this to people, health concerns, financial worries, loneliness and relationship breakdowns can make our lives seem like a desert. But if we observe closely, we'll see that the problem is not just external, it is also internal. There is a desert region in the heart of every human being. Some people try to irrigate this desert by striving for perfection in everything that they do. Others try to keep resources for themselves because they're afraid that the world might overwhelm them. Others take an aggressive approach and to cover their fear or seek the path of simple fun and forgetfulness or try to impress others with how special they are. We all have our strategies for how to deal with the dryness. But as we read the Gospel of John today, Jesus comes with an amazing offer. Jesus says that the Holy Spirit of God will be freely given to everyone. On this Pentecost Sunday, we learn that the Holy Spirit is indeed for everyone. This is the living water that can refresh our thirsty souls and then flow through us to others. Now, all this action takes place at the uh, Festival of the Booths. And that included many themes like God's goodness in bringing rain to the nations, the atonement for the nations, and his final deliverance of Israel with the, the imagery of rivers flowing out of the city of God to irrigate the land. And it's in that context that Jesus stands on the last day of the festival and makes his invitation to everyone who can hear, let anyone, he says, let anyone who is thirsty Come to me and drink. And that places Jesus directly in the role of God, who had spoken through the prophet Isaiah, saying, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And the Gospel of John makes it clear that Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. For John, the main work of the Holy Spirit is to bear witness to the truth, to bear witness to Jesus. Remind the disciples of what he taught, empower them to bear witness and bring the forgiveness of sins and tie them into the eternal life that Jesus offers. To have the Holy Spirit is to have the life of God. Sometimes we encounter ways of thinking. Sometimes we're even tempted to think ourselves that the Holy Spirit is something for special Christians. But notice the conditions that are given for the receiving of the Holy Spirit in today's Gospel reading. The first condition is simply that Jesus has yet to be glorified. And by that, John means in his Gospel, the glorification of Jesus means his death and his resurrection, which has, of course, now already happened. So Jesus has already done the foundational work that will make the Holy Spirit available. And the second condition is simply that the thirsty person wants water. Jesus puts no greater condition on the receiving of the Holy Spirit than that we feel our own need. To trust Jesus as the source of life gives the Holy Spirit and creates within us the spring of eternal life. There are no other conditions. We see something of that also in our reading from 1 Corinthians today. Notice that, first of all, the work of the Holy Spirit is the work of creating faith that enables us to confess Jesus as Lord. That's the primary work of the Spirit. But the Spirit also enables service in the church, and in the manifestations of the Spirit, notice that they're not given to just a few, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit, so that each one has something to offer. And also in the book of Acts, it's easy to see that at Pentecost, it's not just the apostles, but all the disciples whom the Spirit falls on. The Spirit comes to each one of them, as tongues of fire, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they all began to praise God in different languages. The living water that Jesus promised is meant for everyone, and that includes each one of us without exception. As a Christian, the reality is that you have the Holy Spirit and you have the life of God. 
But to say that the Holy Spirit was meant for everyone also means that the Holy Spirit is for others. In the Gospel reading, the springs of living water that represent the Holy Spirit are meant to flow out to other people. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, as scriptures have said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. We have received the abundance and the life of God as the answer to our dryness and we are now meant to be water and life for other people. In Australia there are many places where the vegetation is a lush green around the river but as you move away from the river the ground quickly dries up. But there are areas of our country where good irrigation systems have connected the rivers to the land so that the land can be fruitful even in arid areas. And God has arranged it so that those who are connected to Jesus also become the rivers and canals of living water to those around us. Martin Luther paraphrased Jesus as saying this, To the person who comes to me I shall equip not only to be refreshed and satisfied and to quench his own thirst, but to become a sturdy earthen vessel endowed with the Holy Spirit and with gifts that enable him to give consolation and strength to many other people and serve them as he was served by me. When we're connected to Jesus, we don't need to do everything perfectly. We don't need to impress other people or hold back our resources out of fear or push our ideas onto others because our springs of living water do not come from ourselves but from God. Instead then we can develop the character of Jesus and become a refreshing and life-giving presence to the people around us. We see this in the example of the woman at the well in John chapter 4 who herself was given the gift of living water and she went back into her village and told all the other people there about the good news of the Messiah and what he had said to her. And then they too came to know Jesus and to receive life in his name. In 1 Corinthians we also discover that while we can find satisfaction in using our gifts, the gifts of the Spirit are really meant not for us so much as they are for the common good. Indeed, verses 4, 5 and 6 talk about the gifts, the service and the work in parallel, which means that they interpret each other. So it's clear that the gift that is referred to here is the gift that we bring to others, the Holy Spirit, gives us the gift that we bring to others in the same way that he empowers the service that we do for others. The whole idea is that the empowering work of the Spirit is used to benefit the Christian community. Living water does not stop with us, but it flows out to each other. Today, Jesus invites each one of you to share deeply in the living water. It is for everyone. It flows to you and it will flow through you. Jesus wants us to come to him. If we want to know the living water of the Holy Spirit, it's not so much a chase, matter of chasing after the Holy Spirit, but it's a matter of growing close to Jesus. As we come close to him, then we receive the Spirit. As we read the Gospel stories, as we learn who Jesus is for us and as we place our trust in him for forgiveness and life with God and meaning, then the Spirit turns up and gives us the water of life. McCrindle research in two surveys that have been done to assess the effects of COVID show that there's been some incredible social, financial dislocation and a lot of anxiety. But they also report that 20% of our older stage group and 33% of our young adults are spending more time in praying and in spiritual pursuits. The fact is that all of us can respond better to COVID and indeed all the stresses of life when we keep ourselves connected to Jesus, who is the source of living water. And so the first invitation of our text today is to spend time strengthening our devotional life. Read the scriptures. Get to know the character and the love of Jesus. Reflect on how God has been good to you and pray. The second invitation of our text is become, to become the channels of God's irrigation to a dry world. 
as we are filled, so we also overflow. I don't think it's important so much to match yourself up against any particular list of biblical gifts, but rather what's important is that you consider what you have in abundance, your abilities, your resources, your passions, and in them you will probably find a gift that God intends you to use for the benefit of the body of Christ. This week, look for opportunities to serve others with your skill and efforts. In the last few weeks, we've heard the stories of the the, uh, children who've been making cards to encourage older people and an older member who's been making blankets to encourage others and pass on the love of God. Now, card making and crochet or knitting uh, are not traditional charismatic gifts, but they are certainly signs of living water to other people. We also give living water to others when we share the good news of Jesus. Something as simple as sharing the confidence, comfort and strength that Jesus gives us acts as an invitation to others so that they also may come to Jesus. As we share our lives, our thoughts, our testimonies with each other, we are bringing people also to the living waters. This Pentecost Sunday, as we remember the giving of the Holy Spirit, we are reminded that the Holy Spirit is for everyone. We get to be a part of God's plan to irrigate the world. The Holy Spirit moves through us to other people in our acts of service and testimony and we are God's way of making the dry land fruitful. And if that's too much for us, well, it's not too much for God. The source of power, of course, always remains our relationship with Jesus because we can only give what we have first received. The living Water that flows from us is the same water that has come to us from Christ himself. As we refresh ourselves in Jesus, we become refreshment for the world. And so I invite you to hear again the words of Jesus and know them as his invitation and gift to you. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.